This is Twit. Doctors told him he was going to die. This is the... I don't know if this is a story uh, Gary was talking about. Then the AI saved his life. Scientists are using machine learning to find new treatments among thousands of old medicines. Kate Morgan writing in the New York Times. Uh, he had was battling a rare blood disorder, Poems Syndrome, which had left him with numb hands and feet and enlarged heart and failing kidneys. He became too sick to receive a stem cell transplant. I gave up, he said. I just thought the end was inevitable. Uh, but they found a doctor who they Let's give credit. Earlier. His girlfriend, Tara Theobald, wasn't ready to quit. No, she emailed a doctor named uh, David Fagenbaum, whom they met at a rare disease summit. But he suggested an unconventional combination of chemotherapy, immunotherapy, and steroids untested as a treatment for the disorder. He was responding... Four months, he was healthy enough for a stem cell transplant. Today, he's alive and in remission. But the most important point is the life-saving drug regimen wasn't thought up by the doctor. It wasn't thought up by a person. It was created by an artificial intelligence model. Uh, this doctor, is what Mike was saying earlier. This is the value. Yeah. This is what yeah. it is. Yeah. It's the companion. And, and in a way, this is, I think, what Stephen Wolfram was saying, that the value of AI may be that it sees patterns that we don't. I mean, that's yeah. what it's really, that's what an LLM really is doing, is, yeah. is detecting patterns and making a note of them and then regurgitating them. If it can see patterns that we don't see, and in this case, a combination of medicines that doctors hadn't really thought of. And, and this, is, this to me is the underappreciated uh, way to categorize how AI can be really useful right now. It's certainly useful to me as a journalist and so on, which is like, what are my blind spots? What am I missing? You know, these questions are, AI does a great job because it's not like, well, here's the answer. It's, it'll give you ideas and you can consider those ideas and it can do it very quickly. And so I don't know if that, that there's really a connection between, between the two, but basically people are amazing. People can do all kinds of amazing things. Partnering with AI, we can do so with fewer blind spots, fewer biases, potentially, and with with uh, more awareness. I mean, obviously, it's taking the information that's out there in the medical databases about these different individual components and saying, well, what if we combine them? Uh, and, then the, and then a person, a doctor said, hey, you know, this is doable. This won't kill him, et cetera. And so... Um, yeah, it's pretty amazing. And I think that's the best use for AI. Like, what am I missing? Yeah. Yep. This is something that actually Dr. Feigenboom had been working on his whole life. In fact, he saved his own life uh, by applying a disease that was uh, intended for uh, kidney transplant recipients to uh, reduce rejection to uh, cure his Castleman's disease. And it worked. Nobody had ever used it before. So he created a lab and became a doctor, created a lab uh, to do this, but it was very slow work with just humans going, well, wait, what could we use? So in 2022, he established a nonprofit called Every Cure, aimed at using machine learning to compare thousands of drugs and diseases all at once. And it would, it would suggest these things uh, that worked. They had a 19-year-old patient who was debilitated by chronic vomiting. He couldn't stop. They ran a query uh, on the AI, said, show us every proposed treatment there has ever been in the history of medicine for nausea. <clears throat> the out, Using isopropyl alcohol inhaled through the nose, not recommending this, we are not physicians, but the alcohol uh, popped to the top of the list and it worked instantly. Uh, I think that's really, really interesting. They compare, uh, at the University of Pennsylvania, they, uh, Dr. Fagenboom's platform compares 4,000 drugs against 18,500 diseases, scoring them based on the likelihood of uh, efficacy. And then, I mean, I guess, I, I mean, I guess if you're dying anyway, you're willing to try oh, yeah. anything. Oh, and yeah. uh, this was a perfect example. And, and, and you know, the, the worst case is you've benefited science and you found out what well, it doesn't work. I found out more about it. Right. Uh, Ted has been funded by uh, more than $100 million by commitments. Uh, I'm sorry, Every Cure has been funded by uh, more than $100 million in commitments last year from Ted's Audacious Project Ooh. and the Advanced Research Projects Agency for Health within the health department. I imagine that funding might be in uh, jeopardy. 
Yep. That's the kind of thing you lose. Um, in really interesting story. Uh, mm -hmm. I hope we don't hear more stories about that kind of thing and how they've been defunded and are no longer available. Hey, it's Leo Laporte. I hope you've enjoyed this little clip from our programming at twit.tv. For more, visit our website, twit.tv, or subscribe in your favorite podcast client. There's also a link somewhere down there. <laughs>